Nick's bungalow was um, our ode to the classic American bungalow. I lived at West Egg in a forgotten groundskeeper's cottage squeezed among the mansions of the newly rich. Nick's bungalow is described in the book as a cardboard box at 80 a month. Because we were shooting in Australia and we really wanted to recreate that lush northern hemisphere verdant feel of Long Island, Baz always talks about the dappled light, the inky black shadows as you drive along. As a result, we had to cut the house up into many different parts. The interiors were shot on stage here in Sydney. Action! We took the back of the house to a park right near the studio, Centennial Park. And we chose that location because of the large established trees that replicated um, the look of Long Island. The back of the house, however, was taken two hours outside of Sydney to a little place at the top of a mountain called Mount Wilson. Mount Wilson is an extraordinary corner of the world. Strangely, European and North American trees have been planted there, which meant it was a perfect place to use as our Long Island and put Nick's bungalow in amongst its luscious leaves. You're coming around and the door opens, out comes rain, boom, step out and see your beautiful house, look at it. Oh my goodness gracious me. Is this where you absolutely live? Is this live? where you absolutely live, my darling Nikki? Is this absolutely where you live, my dearest one? Come, tell your driver to go away. Tell your chauffeur to go far away. Come back in an hour, Ferdy. Drive that way, Ferdy. Go, pop, 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 pop. His name is Ferdy. His name is Ferdy. I wouldn't normally use the expression weather event, but that's what it was called. It was La Nina, and it rained and rained and rained and rained. It was so crazy, we were all flooded out. We couldn't get our vehicles to the set. We were trying to shoot in the rain, and it was pouring, pouring rain. And then I had to call Action Rain Machine. So in the rain, we had to turn on a rain machine. So it even got more muddy because it wouldn't rain when I needed the rain. It stopped raining for action. So it was just so insane and so flooded. What are you doing? How's the weather? What's going it's on? It's getting uh, sunnier by the minute. Oh, oh, oh. Look, oh, no. look. there's a man, there's <laughs> a man that knows. <laughs> hey, you know one thing you should talk about is how many locations that to make this tiny little cottage that that cottage has been in, We've had it in Central Park, we've had it on the stage. Now we've got it in the mountains. And don't forget to show the tree inside. Will do. Oh. Oh. A bit like Napoleon's army, we just had to pull out of Moscow and get back and come back the following year and shoot those sunny scenes. And then it rained again. <laughs> We were just washed out day after day after day after day. Every time we went to Mount Wilson, it rained. Some of our overseas crew and actors were just, oh, it just rains all the time in Sydney. Much discussion was had about what the flowers should be. And one of the descriptions of Daisy's girlhood is that she goes to bed after a dance and there's a crushed orchid on the floor. Orchids would have been an extremely rare hothouse flower. Have you got everything you need? Perhaps more flowers. <laughs> I think they did a fine job, don't you? Beautiful difficult to get and certainly difficult to get in the quantities that Gatsby gets. That's funny. What's funny? The meeting of the lovers, you know, it was always about finding, you knew that they were gonna meet. It was always about finding attention in that.
It's really clear in the book and it's beautifully structured in the book. But the thing to really, really deal with in the book is how to increase that tension, that moment when they're going to meet. Because everyone just knows, like, it's all been coming down to this and then suddenly, you know, hang on, where is he? Gatsby's gone. You know, he's so nervously run out and now he's soaking wet and she turns and they meet. And it's a disaster. Disaster, the clock scene. Met before. The clock falls down, the tension, it's ridiculous, it's a terrible idea. Oh, this was a mistake, this was a terrible, terrible mistake. He just embarrassed, Stacey's embarrassed too. Get in there and be, you know. And I love that moment, I think, it's a great moment of acting of Leonardo's where he's like this almost insane, I mean, Leonardo plays his nervousness, a great actor's choice, because he could have played that nurse. He plays this kind of intense, like, you know, he's not nervousness, he, he, it's like he's gonna kill someone. Like, his nerves turns into a kind of anger at the world for making him feel nervous. Hey, you're acting like a little boy. You're being rude. Daisy's in there all alone. And, and you see Leonardo transform and then he's about to go in and there's this great moment. I think it's truly a sort of Leonardo. This is the stuff of which an actor, star, character, creation that Leonardo has his thumbprint on. He's there and he's nervous and he looks and he walks straight into the camera and you see him become Tay Gatsby. And we don't see Daisy, we come outside and we come back and then they're getting on like a house on fire. Now, we had to shoot that scene in, in a set, but what was really problematic was we were meant to go and they were gonna go around the castle in beautiful fields and go swimming in the sun and come and show my castle. It was all gonna be fantastic, all shot in Mount Wilson. After the fifth time of being rained out, I mean, five times. <clears throat> it stopped raining. What it meant was that a lot of those sequences had to be created artificially. The romp around the castle, the fish pond, the beach, the sunny days on the beach, they never went out in a, in a moment of sunshine. And we were able to create, I think, the illusion that it might have been a sunny day and they went swimming. Hope.